The Covert Challenge this year was a fine art auction, and the goal was to help over 200,000 kids and provide 200,000 meals to kids in rural Kenya. Because what's happening there with the pandemic is the case numbers are pretty low, but the pandemic is actually having a significant impact on the education system. Um, and it's severely reducing the amount of kids that are able to return to school, um, even now. How are you able to get other artists involved to donate pieces of their work as well? Originally, it started with me um, and a couple of artists that I had per personal connections with. And really from there, you know, they really liked the idea. Other artists that join can actually challenge other artists to be part of it. And, you know, through that, it actually grew to an over 25 person, uh, 25 artists challenge. What were the final details? What, what were you able to achieve? We raised over 200,000 meals for the children, which was awesome. And then in terms of money, it was over 40,000 US dollars, which is awesome as well. You first received national acclaim for your art when you were just 12 years old. Now, I don't have an artistic bone in my body. You've been described as a Fauvist artist and a neo-expressionist. Can you explain to me what exactly that means? A Fauvist artist is, it was like this time period of like 20 years, maybe in the 1900s. And they were a bunch of French artists who used a lot of colors to represent emotion and expression in the paintings. And you know, that's I guess what I do, um, especially in my landscapes. It's evident that you have a aptitude for art history. So is your career, is this completely kind of self-taught and it's just natural or did you have training at a very young age? Like what was the catalyst when you realized I can actually do this as a career? I've actually never had like uh, any training or anything. Kind of the big tipping point, I guess was I had the chance to visit some awesome galleries like the MoMA when I was like around 10 or 11. Um, and kind of just seeing those works and seeing um, the impact that those works could have and, you know, resonate with like millions and millions of people across like ages, you know, race and everything. Now I've noticed that your art expands beyond just a simple canvas. I mean, the video you put together for the Paul Newman piece was highly creative. Uh, it caught my attention, it was very interesting. And also you're designing sneakers now. How did you get involved with that? I like to kind of take the creativity off the canvas sometimes. So in terms of sneakers and clothes, because I don't really make prints with um, a lot of my pieces, I've kind of tried to find a way to make like derivatives of the products to make it more accessible. Because not everyone wants to go out and like buy a painting, for instance. What are the next challenges that you want to tackle in your career? A large part of it, I guess, focuses around green energy. I've started making this new series where it's called 2050, and it's imagining a lot of like famous landscapes in the year 2050. Evan, thank you very much for your time today. I was gonna say that you're putting 18-year-old Mike to shame, but in truth, you're putting 35-year-old Mike to shame as well. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. Thanks, Evan, we'll talk again soon.